work at growing, even work in public gardens. In the past, I would say it was more available to men than it was to women. And I think in this century and as things change, that women are much more part of the equation and that balance is now a 50-50 balance. My name is Sarah Hadeen. I'm the Living Collections Manager for Smithsonian Gardens. I oversee all of our living collections, not just orchids, but also trees in our display collection. Living collections can be plants, they can be animals. A living collection is something that is alive. It's not in a drawer. It's a lot of plants. I mean, the, the orchids are nearly 6,000 plants. The trees are about 1,800. And then we're just in the process of digitizing our display collections, which are all the perennial plants around all of our museum areas. We're guesstimating that's around 20,000 plants. We're one of the largest orchid species species collections held ex situ, which means off-site from their, where they normally um, live. And so what that is, we're a repository of genes. So we're holding this material, the species material, as a, as a placeholder in case another institution needs it or someone else wants to do some reintroductions. So that's number one with a species collection this large. We're a repository of genes. We want to become a conservation organization. We want to collect plants that are endangered, that are losing their habitat, again, as a, as a repository. This is a, a vanilla vine. Who would have known that it would be a vine that looks like this? And the flower is, it's pretty, but it typically only lasts for a day or so. This is a um, Phragmopedium, which is a tropical lady slipper. And so it's native to South America. This is a beautiful plant that if you hit it right, it can continue to bloom year round. And so for me, it's a gift that keeps on giving. I think our challenges are, we live in Washington, D.C., which in the summer has very high humidity and has temperatures up to the hundreds. And so for many orchids, are, they are from the tropics, but many orchids that we would like to bloom don't really do well in those conditions. So you have to think about, can you grow it? Can you be successful with it? And some orchids just don't, they need more of something. They need more um, humidity. They need more cold temperatures. They need more heat. They need a higher temperature in the evenings. It takes so much time and it takes so much effort um, to understand what the cultural requirements are for each different type of orchid. It's not one size fits all. I think the more challenging it is, the more fun it is. The why of why we collect is for display. So what we're trying to do as we're refining our collection, building our collection, is make sure we're displaying, have beautiful displayability. Does it have a beautiful blossom that speaks to you? Something different than you would see in your box store or at your grocery store, or even you know, at your orchid society. Something that's more difficult to bloom because we have the expertise and the wonderful environment to grow it in. Horticulture has been kind of this pathway that's not always been available to everyone. That's what we're really trying to find now. It's not only opening up to more women, but it's opening up to people of all different backgrounds, making it available to all. That's what my role is, to give people options and opportunities. I think the next thing for women in the orchid profession or in public horticulture or public gardens is to have access. Access from a young age to what are living collections? Why are they important? What is a public garden? Why do I need to go to a museum? Get them interested so they don't have plant blindness. When they go outside, they see the trees, they see the beauty around them. Orchids are also a lifetime of learning. When you're trying to get into something, you can have that sense of insecurity. If you are interested, you should try. But never trying, that's the worst. Never to try. Find something that gives you joy and passion that you can feel every day when you go to work. It's a joy and you're so grateful and lucky to have that in your life.